Hey there folks and welcome back to the I Am CDB Project. I of course am your host CDB, you are not, and today we are going to use the Sterling Stainless Steel Razor, which you saw in my last video. Um, last time I used this uh, base plate and this time I'm using this one. Again, I don't have any information on this. I, realize, I saw an email today where someone said they sent me some information, but I didn't see I didn't get the information or I don't know where it is. So I'm just winging it as far as just trying it and showing you the razor in action. Pretty good. Looks like pretty good uh, blade gap there. Um, I'm assuming this one is a little more aggressive than the last, but we'll find out. I'm going to use the Latoha or however you say that uh, cream. Don't bother correcting me because I do not care. Quite frankly, if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. Uh, I don't really care. Uh, maybe I should, but honestly, I don't. And I'd just rather be honest with you. Those type of things are not important to me. What really is important is to how how the product works. And, you know, my uh, sort of my running thing is how do things work? Not the nth degree on every single detail on getting, you know, every little shape geek detail uh, correct I've called things the wrong I remember the the last time I made a flub was on the uh, uh, echo razor I think I called it echo and it was meant to be more like uh, I think I was fr uh, framing it in terms of economy and maybe it was more environment I, I don't uh, I don't recall exactly how I got it wrong but that shows you how little I care and I realized that some vendors and so forth may not want to send me a product like this razor because they want their um their nomenclature and all that perfectly regurgitated from copy or something and i just don't do that and i'm not going to do it and so if someone doesn't want me to try a product because i'm going to butcher the name of it or whatever then so be it because I want people to come here and knowing they're they're getting things from me as I see it. And it's not, you know, I'm just regurg regurgitating a bunch of crap which I've watched from other YouTubers or manufacturer advertising, you know, marketing material. I'm not here to do that. So this is my channel. I am CDB. Um... I'm doing it my way, and admittedly, it will not be favored uh, by some vendors, but other, other vendors actually love it, because they're like, hey man, this, guy, this guy's just gonna call it like he sees it, you know, period. He's not in anybody's pocket, he's not really influenced by anybody uh, any longer. At one time I was, believe me, because I fell into all the hype and, and so forth, but no longer is the case, so. You know, when I'm trying something now, it's just like, hey, it's good or it's not. <laughs> you know, it's as simple as this. And let's see, yeah, that feels uh, pretty aggressive there, but still pretty smooth. Not bad at all. Again, the even the first uh, base plate I tried felt like it was doing a good bit of work, you know, ag aggressive. Uh, and this one feels it too, so I'm not sure what the blade gap is here. Again... This is a razor by Rod Sterling. Not for sale yet, as far as I know. Again, I could be wrong. I'm not living this stuff day and night. And so I'm just trying the products and, and sort of giving you some commentary as I go. It is off the cuff by design. And so if you want to know more about these base plates and the, the base, the uh, blade gap and all that kind of stuff, get with Ron. It is stainless steel and uh, working well though. So that I'll tell you. I, I got to tell you something because I find it kind of funny. Um, or at least it is for me. So today I was talking to a young fellow. You know, in his early 20s, I would say. And we were talking about like restaurants or something. And something I noticed about people is that the way language is changing. And one example is... Uh, so I'm not using exactly what I use. But essentially, it was something like, he said, I feel like, he didn't say this exactly, but say, Taco Bell prices have increased, let's say. He said, I feel like, and I said, what do you mean you feel like? Do you think they've increased? Or 
or do you feel like? And he was like, oh, well, you know, I think. And so I've noticed lately that more and more, I'm hearing people say, I feel like, I feel like. And a lot of times I'm like, I don't know if that's really a feeling or it's just a thought. And they're not, I guess they can be tied, but they're not necessarily one in the same. But feel now is sort of replacing thought. And I don't know if that's positive. And, and maybe this is just the boomer thing coming out of me, because I understand that's the new term for, I'm not really a boomer, in real terms, like baby boomer, which would be somebody in their you know 60s or late 50s, all the way up into 70s-ish, you know. So I'm not a baby boomer. But now, of course, there's a term for folks who the youngest uh, Zoomers, I guess, are calling people that are older than them who like complain about millennials and so forth, boomer, as if that's an insult. Folks, don't take that as an insult, please. Um, a lot of people ripped on millennials, including myself, and to some extent, I think unfairly, because people that are often labeled as millennials, millennials aren't actually millennials. They're like Zoomers, whatever they call them. The, you know. So we're talking about folks who are you know, fairly young now, and not millennials, which are sometimes in their mid-20s, let's say. say. Uh, I don't know when all the the uh, years intersect there or exactly, but anyway, the case I'm making is millennials took a beating, so it's okay for older folks to get swung back on. So if someone calls you a boomer because you're in your 40s or 50, let's say, or even late 30s, then say, that's great, just make my coffee or fill my order, you know, and just leave it at that. Look, you know, millennials have got beaten up on quite a bit. And, and in a lot of cases, I don't think it was actually that generation doing some of the things that they were beat up for. So I think it's fair for everybody to sort of, you know, take a little bit of poking. Um, and so Boomer is sort of, you know, it's actually been around for a while, but it's gaining popularity lately because the response is, okay, boomer. And that's meant, you know, you're out of touch old person, let's say. So anyway, going back to what I was saying, I think the language is changing. So just talk to folks and take notice of how many times they say, I feel like, I feel like. And it's not actually a feeling that they're talking about. It's a thought. You know, feelings used to be like a legitimate feeling. Like you have a feeling of love or feeling of anxiety. That's, But now, the word feeling is being used interchangeably with what used to be, what used to be think, like I think X or Y. And so, f trust me on this. Listen to the way people talk and you're gonna see a whole lot of I feel like. And I don't know if that's a deliberate shift uh, to somehow make people feel better about expressing their feelings, because you know, Traditional males have not always been great at expressing feelings. And so maybe this is saying I feel, I feel, I feel all the time is in some way supposed to benefit and get males to open up. I don't know, but I noticed that the phrase I feel like is being used interchangeably with I think. And they're not necessarily one and the same. So pay attention to that and see if I'm not right. I've been hearing it a lot as I, you know, listen to folks talking, particularly younger folks. And so I just think it's a different way of, you know, expressing things. And to me, thoughts and feelings are all often different and they're not one and the same. However, for better or worse, they're sort of been lumped together. And I don't know if that bodes well for us or, you know, I don't really know. Maybe I'm just a boomer and I'm out of touch and I don't understand. Again, it does not offend me because I realize that, you know, things do change. I used to think that, even not too long ago, these kids, you would see kids watching um, people on Twitch or whatever playing video games. And you're like, why are people watching other people play video games and they're not just playing the video games? And then I realized that a lot of these people they're watching are entertainers and they're actually, they're not actually watching necessarily for the 
video game, but for the drama around the games and who's mad at who. And, and so it's entertainment. You know, it's not just like they're getting entertained by simply watching. Although in some cases, you know, they're watching someone play videos to figure out how to play the video game. But in a lot of cases I've found, it's entertainment. You have people who are really entertaining who have found a way to make a living commenting while they're playing video games. They're essentially commentators and, and entertainers who are making their living by just commenting while playing video games, which is super, uh, it's genius. Actually, I wish I would have thought of doing something like that and creating a following. And, and so you're playing video games all day, eight, 10 hours a day streaming, making tons of money, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Those kids aren't stupid, my friends. These are really smart kids who have figured out a way to monetize their hobby, which is, I mean, our hobby here, shaving, wouldn't we love to get paid hundreds of thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars a month to shave and just flap gums? I mean, that would be outstanding, but sadly, uh, none of us are that swift, or at least no one has <laughs> figured it out. Yeah, but anyway, so I think somewhat, in some ways we don't understand. I mean, you need to take time to listen. But in other ways, we've already seen it, we've already done it, and, and there's wisdom that we can share, the boomers and out-of-touch adults. So it's a give and a take. So make sure you're sort of listening to both sides and, and sort of trying to figure out your way and uh, trying to be reasonable, at least. That's that's my advice. But on some things, you cannot yield. I mean, it's it's a simple, for example, if someone has a drug problem, I mean, clearly you want to keep them off. I mean, some things are just black and white. You want to keep people from doing certain things. That's all there is to it. And other things, maybe we need to learn to study a little bit more and figure out where people are coming from. It's just my opinion. Um, on the razor, really nice shave. This was fairly aggressive. Uh, in relation to the last plate, it seemed to me to be a little more aggressive, uh, but it was still smooth. Again, the sterling stainless steel, no vendor details to regurgitate. I realize some people will not like that. I do not care. I don't, I I'm just being honest. Um, the goal here is just to show you the razor, let you know that it's out there. You buy it if you want to, don't buy it, but it is there. Um, no, I don't know if it's for sale or not. It will be appearing at some point, presumably. It's working well for me so far. That's really all I can tell you. And so check with Rod if you want to get the details uh, of the razor or if it's posted in some forum where people geek out all day on shaving. Uh, ch check them out. But here, just know I'm using it. It's working well for me. Take it for what it's worth. Anyway, I got to run. Until next time, I've been your host, CDB. You and I, God bless.